evaluating a variable expression. So first I probably need to define what is a variable expression and hopefully from there you'll find it's really easy to evaluate it. So the vocabulary word that I need to go over is variable. Now I've said this before, but here's the first time I am officially defining it. A variable is a letter of which the numerical value is unknown. So basically this is where we start to insert the alphabet into math. We want to come up with a specific value, but we don't know what that exact value is, so we start to use variables or letters instead. A variable expression is a expression that combines multiple types of variables. An example of that is down here. Here's a variable expression, and this has four different variables with it. So to evaluate a variable expression, all we need to do is substitute in the numerical values that it gives us for this variable expression and then simplify it from there. Now the simplification should be easy because it just follows the PEMDAS that we've talked so much about so far. And actually, I find that most students make more mistakes in these types of problems when just rewriting it. So my suggestion to you is you probably are going to want to use more parentheses than what you expect in the first place. For example, use parentheses to denote multiplication rather than the dot in the middle, and use parentheses around any negative values to hold the negative with the number. So I'm going to do this example here. A times B, where my A value is 2 and my B value is 3, I'm going to use 2 times 3 plus 3 times my D value, which is 4, times my C value, which is negative 1. So notice almost every number I've inserted in with parentheses. And now let me do a quick color coding for you. A was 2, so I substitute that in for my 2 value. B was defined as 3, so I substituted that in my 3 value. C is negative 1. I replaced it where the C letter went. And my D value was given as 4, so I plugged it in where the 4 is. And of course, 3 in my original expression stays as 3. So this one might not look like it would have been so difficult to insert these numbers, but trust me, these problems get really difficult really fast. From here, just PEMDAS again, order of operations. I have multiplication. And now that we've seen the commutative and associative properties, we know that we can do this multiplication in pretty much any order. So over here on the left, 2 times 3 gives me 6. And over here on the right, I'm going to multiply all of these at the same time. 3 times 4 gives me 12, and 12 times negative 1 gives me a negative 12. My last operation is addition, or I could rewrite this as a subtraction problem, whatever is easiest for you. And 6 minus 12 gives me a negative 6. So my final answer to this example is negative 6. I actually have two more examples of this, and these are a little bit more difficult than the first example. So I suggest that you pause the video and work these on your own, really focusing on how you insert the numbers, because that's where most mistakes are made. So let's start with example two. I already have a parenthesis here. So at first I do my D, which is four, minus my A value, which is two, times my B value, which is 3. And notice I kind of neglected my own suggestion here. I used a dot instead of parentheses to represent multiplication. And I did that because I already have parentheses here. So it can be OK. Just really concentrate on how you're putting these numbers in. Squared divided by C, which is negative 1. Now this one, you definitely need to put parentheses around the C value because that exponent goes to the whole number, which I'm substituting in for C. So it goes to all of negative 3. So PEMDAS says the inside of my parentheses first. I'm going to do this here, focusing on multiplication before subtraction. 
So I have 4 minus 6 squared divided by negative 1 cubed. Again, inside the parentheses, 4 minus 6 gives me a negative 2 squared divided by negative 1 cubed. Now I have parentheses left, but no operations in them, so I switch to my exponents. A negative 2 squared gives me a positive 4. Negative times negative gives me positive. And a negative 1 cubed gives me a negative 1. A negative an odd amount of times ends up to be negative. My last step, 4 divided by negative 1 gives me a negative 4. And that is my final answer to this problem. Switching over to example 3, same thing, there's a fraction involved. Just focus on inserting the numbers correctly and follow your rules of order from there. So first I have A, which is 2, times B, which is 3, minus 4 times C, which is negative 1, all over 2 times B, which is 3, plus my C, which is negative 1. So again, notice every time I insert a negative, I definitely put parentheses around that. That way I don't lose it. All right, we know with fractions we have hidden parentheses. So work the top and the bottom separately, and then you can divide as your last step. And so inside those parentheses, we want to do multiplication. So on the top, 2 times 3 gives me 6. And here, I'm going to think about it as a negative 4 times a negative 1. And that would give me a positive 4. On the bottom, 2 times 3 is 6, plus a negative 1, or I can rewrite that as minus 1. On the top, 6 plus 4 gives me 10. On the bottom, 6 minus 1 gives me 5. And so my last thing is to divide these. 10 divided by 5 gives me a final answer of 2. So there is how you would evaluate a variable expression. Just substitute in the numbers and then simplify from there using your rules of order.